Okay, welcome to the first practical in my GCSE AQA electronics course. This is a very simple practical. We're going to look at how to light up an LED and we're going to be using a current limiting resistor and find out how to calculate its value, as well as learning how to measure current in a circuit. As we can see, it's a very simple circuit. We have a 5 volt power supply, a 220 ohm resistor and an LED. What do we need to know about LEDs first of all? Well, let's have a little look at the electronic characteristics of an LED. There are quite a few there, but in fact we only really need to know two of them. The first one is that forward current. Symbol IF, I forward. It tells us that its maximum value is 20 milliamps. We don't want any more than 20 milliamps flowing through the LED, otherwise it will get damaged. Also, it's forward voltage, VF, voltage forward, under test conditions of 20 milliamps, tells us that the minimum voltage required is 1.8 volts. In other words, it won't light up, or at least it won't be very bright. And its maximum voltage is 2.2 volts. In other words, anything more than 2.2 volts will also damage the LED. We generally use, in our calculations, which we'll come on to, a value of 2 volts and 20 milliamps as the standard value for a 5 millimeter red LED which we'll be using. OK, let's go back to our circuit. So here is our circuit. Let's have a look at it. Now, I'm going to turn on the power supply. Hopefully you will see the LED come on. And there we go. We want to measure the current flowing into the LED. Whenever we do that, we have to break the circuit and replace the broken bit of the circuit with an ammeter so that the current is going to flow through the ammeter and back into the circuit. This circuit is very nice to do that because, of course, we've got this little piece of wire. I pull the wire out. All I have to do is replace my ammeter where that piece of wire went. So one side of the wire went there the other side of the wire went there and when I turn on the ammeter you should see the LED come on. Now I know that it lies within the range uh, of milliamps and we can see that it reads 12.61 milliamps. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to enter that into my table. Now the table is on the sheet that I give the pupils. Hopefully Hopefully, if you don't have that, you will be able to download it from my website. So, 220 ohm resistor is 12.61 milliamps. Next, I'm going to remove the 220 ohm one and I'm going to replace it with the 470 ohm one. And as soon as I place it in the breadboard, the LED comes on and my reading is 6.35 milliamps 6.35 milliamps there we go and finally I have a 1k resistor that I'm going to use so I remove the 470 and I replace that with a 1k resistor and the LED comes on and the reading on my ammeter reads 3.06 milliamps 3 point zero six milliamps okay now we can always do calculations associated with this and what we need to do is work out how much current should have been flowing in that circuit with a 220 ohm resistor now what is the calculation that we need to do here well we know that we said that this LED uses up 2 volts and 20 milliamps, no more than, should flow through it. But of course this resistor is limiting the amount of current flowing through it with this 5 volt supply. So if the LED is using up 2 of the volts, that means that if we started with 5, there must be 3 volts across this resistor. Because the 3 across here and the 2 across here add up to 5. So. We started with 5 volts, 2 of them 
have been used across the LED which leaves us with 3 volts across that resistor. Now, Ohm's law tells us that voltage divided by resistance, in this case 220 ohms, will give us the current flowing through the circuit. So 3 volts divided by 220 ohms, and we'll need to go to our calculator here, 3 volts divided by 220 ohms equals 0.0136, in this case, amps. Because this is in volts, this is in ohms, this must be in amps. But that's a bit of a cumbersome value, 0 0.0136 amps. So if we move that decimal place forward three places, that will give us... Thirteen point six, but in this case now because we've moved it forward three, it becomes milliamps. So we have, or should have had, thirteen point six milliamps flowing in this circuit. If we go back to our results, we can see that actually we had twelve point six one. So it's about one milliamp, which is quite a small value out, but it's not accurate. Just going to show you something on the calculator which is quite useful. Rather than moving your decimal point forward, you will find an engineering button which puts it into standard notation. So if I press that engineering button, you will see that automatically the calculator is showing 13.63 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So that's 13.6 milliamps as we've written down there. Right, next, we're going to do the same calculation, but this time we're going to do it with our 470 ohm resistor. So we started with 5 volts. We take away the 2 volts that we have across the LED. That leaves us with 3 volts. We divide by 470 ohms, which gives us a value of 6.38 times 10 to the minus 3. So this is already put it into the standard form minus 3, which is the same as milliamps. So let's enter that into our table, which is 6.38 milliamps. And that is pretty close to our value that we had. I'm just going to enter in the top value as well, 13.6 milliamps. So, the 470 ohm was only 0 0.03 milliamps out. Let's do the same for the 1000 ohm resistor. We started with 5 volts. We take away the 2 volts across the LED, leaving us with 3 volts across the resistor. We divide by 1000 ohms. And that gives us a value of 3 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 3 milliamps. And again, that's pretty close to the 3.06 milliamps that we measured using our ammeter. So these values are pretty close, but they aren't exact. Let's have a look at some of our conclusions and see if we can answer these questions. What do you notice about the value of the current as you increase the resistor value? Well, quite clearly, here our resistor value goes up, and here our measured current goes down. In fact, if you look at it a little bit more closely, this is 220 ohms, 470 is about twice the value of the 220 ohm, and our current was 12, and it's gone down to 6. So. Whilst our resistance doubles, our current halves. Again, 470 to 1K. 1K is approximately twice the value of the 470. And here, the current has gone down from 6 milliamps down to 3 milliamps. So as the resistance doubles, the current halves. Is there a difference between the measured and calculated values? Well, quite clearly, there is a difference. It's not significant. Not in this experiment, but why is it not exact? Well, in our previous tutorial where we looked at resistors and colour codes, we found out that the gold band gives us a 5% tolerance. 
And in this circuit, we have a number of factors that could be affecting the tolerance. So we have our resistor that could be 5% plus or minus its given value. We have an LED that won't be absolutely exact. We have a power supply that tells us it's 5 volts, but I suspect should I measure it, it might be 4.95 or 5.05. And additionally, we have an ammeter making its measurements and they may, that might not be to an exact tolerance either. So we have four different things that may be affecting or have a tolerance value that may not be exact. Which brings us to a slightly different value on our results. Write down all the Ohm's law relationships between current, voltage and resistance and then write down the formula for power. Let's have a little look at these. Well, we know that V is equal to I times R. That's our Ohm's law triangle. Therefore, we know that voltage is equal to current times resistance. Therefore, we know that, that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And we therefore know that resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Power is equal to voltage times current. Therefore, taking these values and putting them into here, if we know that power is equal to voltage times current, and we know that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, Therefore, we know that voltage times voltage is V squared divided by R. So power is equal to voltage squared divided by R. And then finally, we can rearrange again. If we know that power is equal to voltage times resist, um, sorry, current, and we know that voltage is equal to I times R, and then power is voltage times I, so we're times I again. Therefore, I times I is I squared times R. So power is equal to I squared times R. On the handout, you will find quite a useful little link, uh, the KPSEC site, that gives you a little bit more information on Ohm's Law. Finally, I'm going to do a little exercise just to find out what value of resistance we would have needed in our circuit if we had wanted to limit the current flowing to 20 milliamps through the LED. Well, if we know that there was 2 volts across the LED and we started with 5 volts and we therefore have 3 volts across the resistor and we wanted no more than 20 milliamps to flow through the circuit, we can use those values to calculate the value of the resistor that we would have needed. So 3 divided by 20 milliamps. Now, 20 milliamps is 0 0.020 of an amp. But why enter that when our calculator allows us to do that for us? 20 exponent minus 3 will give us that value. That's telling us it's milliamps. 3 divided by 20 milliamps. And the answer is 150. So had we used a 150 ohm resistor, we would have limited the current flowing through the circuit to 20 milliamps. This is a very common GCSE question. In fact, in last year's exam, it popped up three times. The next part of that question sometimes asks, what value resistor do we need to make sure that we limit the current flowing to 20 milliamps? And if we didn't have a 150 ohm resistor in our preferred values, 
we would have to go to the next value up because we would want to increase the resistance so less current flows. If that resistor was less, more current would flow and we could damage the LED. As it happens, 150 ohms is a preferred value in our E24 series of resistors. This is the end of the first tutorial.